Good morning, God's family. I greet you again from the century here at St. John's. And just want to say how sorry I am that we had to make this decision to minister virtually again. It's a decision that I did not take lightly, but prayerful and after careful consideration that we need to distance, particularly now during this cold winter month and days, so that we maintain our distance and keep safe and warm, but still remain united. Don't worry, as I look across this church, I do not see empty pews, but I see the faces of the people who worship here on a Sunday. So come, let us pray. Loving God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, suffered and died so that we might receive courage and comfort through his resurrection, fill your church with such love for humanity that we may willingly bear the sorrows of the world until with all mankind we are brought to fullness of life, where all sorrow is comforted and every need is met as we contemplate your perfect love and glorify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Family, I greet you, and as I greet you, I bring to you the sad news of the passing of Mary Wiley, and to commend her soul to God, to thank God for our memories of her, her faithfulness, her love, a sense of one of humor, and her deep faith. So we give thanks to God for Mary and trust that God's comfort will be with her children, Jenny and her family, Jane and her family, her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. May God in his infinite mercy grant them his comfort. And so God, we commend Mary Wiley to you, trusting in your infinite mercy knowing that you are the God of resurrection and that you make all things new. Comfort her family, we pray, in the name of Christ. Grant to Mary a peaceful rest and to us your peace. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. And then secondly, before I move into the readings and this, receive the good news from Ish. Gabella worships here, Ish and his wife Bongi, is that Bongi received the highest honor from the French government, the highest honor that can be given to a citizen or to a person who's not a French citizen. So in a sense, he says Bongi was, was knighted by the French government. She received the highest honor. The only other person I know in this country who received that honor is, the, is, is Tuli Madoncella. The French government honored her as well for the work that she has done. Now, Bongi is known for her work with the Mandela Children's Fund. She started it and completed it with the work of the Mandela Children's Hospital and has now retired. And so she has been honored for that remarkable work she has done for more than 30 years. And we give thanks to God for Bongi and honor her for the work that she has done. Bless you, Bongi. And, and if you may share in this moment with your wife. God bless. Amen. Dear family, our readings for today are first and foremost from the Psalms, and it's from Psalm, Psalm 9, verse 9 to 20. And then there are selected verses from 1 Samuel chapter 17. But I want to suggest that we read the first 50 verses of the first book of Samuel in chapter 17 is the story of David and Goliath. 
And then we read from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. And we read from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. I read to you first from 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, <clears throat> in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak as to my children, open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. And then from the Gospel according to St. Mark, listen to the good news of Christ. As recorded in the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. And glory to Christ, our Savior. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were, other, there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and, each, and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the gospel of Christ and praise to Christ, our Lord. I think these are fitting readings, especially for today, as we have made the decision to worship in, in this way. It's a reading about fear and faith. The story in, 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 in 1 Samuel 17 is not just about a fight between David and Goliath. It is a recording of the lack of faith on the part of Saul and the Israelites and the strong faith expressed by David. Because David's word to the Goliath is that he comes to him not just with his sling, but he comes to him in the name of the Lord. Now, the amazing thing that I have discovered as we go through this time also when we had to close the church for in person service because of the pandemic that surrounds us, is that we need to make a choice between fear and faith. But there's nothing wrong with fear. It is how we deal with it. 
For the Israelites and for Saul, their response to fear was to run away from the Philistines and from Goliath. For David, the choice was to face his fear with a deep faith in an unfailing God. And so that's where these lessons call us to. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, when he speaks to them, he wants to remind them that as followers of Christ, there will always be struggles and stumbling blocks on the way. There will always be moments when you need to make a choice between how you deal with your fear, with the reality of your faith. When you face imprisonment, when you are being beaten, when you are without food, when you live as an exclusive, how do you deal with your fear in relation to your faith? I think that is the question that this moment and this time calls us to and that these readings speak to. The story in the gospel, and the gospel lesson holds all of it together. The story in the gospel is Jesus has just been confronted by the Pharisees and the scribes and has been accused that he's doing miracles in the name of Beelzebub, of Satan. Then he leaves that area and gets into the boat and says to them, let's go to the other side. Now, that's the amazing thing. He leaves the Jewish region to go to the Gentile region on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. He leaves that which is known to go to that place which is unknown. And it's between the known and the unknown that the storm happens. Now, for me, the thing that amazes me, and when we continue to read, and we will do so maybe next week, when Jesus lands on the other side, he meets with a madman in Mark chapter 5. The choice is, when you're in the storm, whether you turn back to that which is known, or do you continue through the storm to a place that may not be known, where you do not know what your reception will be like. And so that's what Jesus does. He goes on to the boat with his disciples. They continue to head right into the storm, and he is asleep. And the disciples wake him and say, don't you care that we are busy drowning? He wakes up, he calms the storm. Now this is the thing, he doesn't rebuke them for their fear. He speaks to the disciples about their lack of faith. I think in the times in which we live, as a community of faith, and in particular for us, who are followers of the living Christ, the one who conquered death and, and was ro raised to life on the third day, as followers of the resurrected Christ, it's how we deal with our fear. I think, I think, that to be vaccinated is right. To wear masks is right. To maintain social distancing is right. But we need more than that to conquer this pandemic. We need a strong faith in the God who calms the storm. And when I say that, it doesn't mean that Jesus will remove the storm. He will just help us as we hold on to him to walk right through the storm. Fear is not about running away. Fear is how Jesus teaches the disciples to move into the area of their fear and to conquer it with a strong faith in him who calms the storm. So that in the end, they are actually surprised and amazed. Who is this, they say, that even the winds and the waves obey him? So I think what this moment calls us to, it calls us it calls us to a faith 
in a God who conquers the storm. It calls us to be constantly reminded that there's never a moment in that storm, even when, while Jesus is asleep, that he leaves the disciples. He stays with them in the storm. And his question to the disciples is not a question about their fear. It's a question that says, are you prepared in the face of the storm to hold on to me? I think that's the faith. That's the question that Christians in our day as we face this pandemic are faced with. To be prepared to hold on to him in spite of the storm. And know that he is the one who will carry us through the storm. And I pray that as we move towards that day, I lost my sermon, which is a good thing for us, you know. For Paul, as I conclude, I think, in spite of all his experiences, for Paul, the life of faith is to seek to constantly walk in the company of Jesus. And sometimes that walk will bring heartaches and hardships and challenges that we need to face as the one we are facing currently. To walk with Jesus is not to run from the storm. It is like David to stand and face the giant. And to know that it's not David who stops Goliath. It's God who stops Goliath. It is Jesus who calms the storm. And so we do what we have to do. You know, I wear my mask. I sanitize my hands. I maintain social distancing. But I also constantly, when I, we wake up in the morning and before we go to bed at night, to seek to deepen our faith. That's what we do. We cannot allow this time to overwhelm us. We cannot allow the reality of, in which we live cannot allow it to chase us and make us run. It speaks with a loud voice like Goliath spoke to David. It has touched the lives of many with pain and has taken from us people that we love. Just yesterday, we received the news of another priest who died as a result of COVID-19. This is what faith does. As we hold on to Jesus, he helps us to navigate life through the storm. So I ask that as we move forward, that we hold on to him and allow him to teach us how to navigate life through the storm. I pray that God will bless you and your loved ones that our God will stay close to you by his spirit, will embrace you with the warmth of his love, and hold you in the gentleness of his grace. May God bless you and yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, Father of every family, in every world, make our family life a holy communion with each other and with you, so that we may be a refuge for the lost and lonely, and a continuing sign of your love and forgiveness held out to every person through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and yours now and forever. Amen.